In October 19th, we gave him the first yellow card. And then in November 19th, we gave him the second yellow card. And December 19th, is this the red card? Kabila will remain in office until a new president is elected. Nothing will happen if somebody will try to disturb the security in this town. He will meet police forces as everywhere in the world. So they are talking here about themselves, about their parties, about what they can do together, but they don't know what the real population is asking for from them. With two days to Christmas, vendors and store operators in downtown Kingston are optimistic things will continue to improve. Their view comes days after gang violence threatened their livelihood. Yes, things picking up, things picking up for the Christmas. It's the view of many vendors in downtown Kingston, many of whom were up to last week terrified that gang violence would mar the usually lucrative Christmas season. But following a tour by the police and a promise to be more visible in the market district. I'm not concerned about crime. I'm confident in the police then. Confident in that. Store operators and shoppers are just as confident. Director of the Amar's stores, Michael Amar, says the police presence has improved business this week. There is a heavy police presence downtown and so far they've been doing a pretty good job. If you look around, you'll see them all over the streets trying to keep order. There are plenty of police down here and I'm holding my bag very tight. Yes, I am. But um, when you hear about it, then you avoid it. But when you're not really hearing about it, you can't take a chance. Vendors and shoppers in the Coronation Market expressed similar feelings. People them come out this morning, everybody are buy. This man will get a, a good crowd of people in the market. The, the police them come in and start to do them job. And we appreciate that very much. I feel free. Um, I've not really experienced any sort of violence or so. It's just a lot of people shopping. So I'm okay. There is one concern among food vendors, however. Peter, a sorrel vendor, says despite more people coming out, sales have been slow compared to last year. He blamed the economy, but says shoppers are now spending on other things. Nobody now buying the food this year. Clothes and bleaching cream on here. Nails, eyelash. What's up? What's up on here? The put over there. Honestly, we don't really feel the spirit like one time. The, 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 the passion for Christmas are dead out. I don't know why, but honestly, I feel like they're dead out. So people just don't really have to do them thing. But now they shop like one time again. Can't nobody really make the money again. Nigeria's female football team, popularly known as the Super Falcons, won the African Women's Cup of Nations in Cameroon. But instead of this victory putting smiles on their faces, it pitted them against the football body over the payment of their allowances and bonuses. They took to the streets between the National Assembly and the Secretariat gate of the presidential villa to protest against this injustice. But it's now good news to the team because President Muhammadu Buhari has ordered the immediate payment of their allowances today. We are now joined by sports journalist Solomon Ajuziogu joining us from Lagos. Thank you very much for joining us today on the morning call. But can you tell us more on the announcement that the Falcons will be paid? Well, I think I do not take anything that is said seriously until it is done. It's um, an assurance, a pledge to pay. Until that happens, um, there is nothing I can say to that. S Solomon, uh, uh, Solomon, I want to know from you, how has the government, how has the Federation been reacting to this situation? 
Well, the point has always been that the Fed has complained about not having money. Um, uh, and everybody thinks that, okay, because it is Nigeria's color and it is Nigeria's flag, and so the government should take responsibility because it's an embarrassment to the nation of the NFF that it does not have money. And so the thing is, if it does not have money, then who should give it money? The national teams are the biggest brands of football in this country. And to imagine that with all the grants, with all the money that the Football Federation gets from FIFA, gets from sponsorship, gets from broadcast rights, and it will keep complaining that it does not have money. I think that in itself is a cause for concern. Um, at the heart of this matter is that the NFS does not have money, so they, or they keep saying they do not have money. And I don't believe that a lot of Nigerians believe them. Well, Nigerians have been angered by statements made by the Minister of Sports and Youth Barristers, Solomon uh, Dalum, that he never expected the Super Falcons to win the competitions. I think it's unfortunate that people go on to bully the sports minister over this matter, um, whether we want to acknowledge it or not. Um, the president of the Confederation of African Football is Issa Hayatu, a Cameroonian. Cameroon was hosting the Africa Women Cup of Nations. And you must understand that whether they knew the team was going to win or not, allowances are allowances. Your salary is your salary. And it's not depending on whether you win or you do not win. You get paid winning bonuses if you win. But your allowances for camping, your allowances for taking part in a competition, your allowances for playing for the national team, they are your salary, they must be paid. The NSF officials get paid their monthly wages, the NSF officials probably get their extra codes as well, so why would the players get their money? Voilà, vous l'avez suivi là, that les was Solomon Ajoziopo, a sports journalist joining us from Nigeria in Lagos. Um, it's an aquatic organism, and I did speak to its desiccation. I also consulted with colleagues in India that I'm familiar with, and I told them about the case, because you know that cholera is endemic there. They cannot, just as the literature states, 700 days is the longest time that anyone knows about culture in cholera. The general conclusion um, from the audience, having heard the presentations, is that the they, from a health perspective, development of the property represents no risk to public health in, in that particular area. If the rest there will be no health effect, but I really, really not, was not satisfied. The nature of the development being planned was also an issue. Reports are that a supermarket, pharmacy and food store are being planned for the area. We, the, the right stakeholders, are not in agreement with the government going and giving approval for a supermarket, a food court, that type of thing, on, on a cemetery that was quarantined for 150, 160 years. There is serious traffic, serious traffic. There's a problem with rats, which we've had for years, and we've had to kill the rats. The sewer runs under there, the public sewer under the old road. People enjoy a right of way across that land. It has never been built on. Never. That has always either been an open path or a public road. But the health minister, Dr. Christopher Tufton, saying approval already legally granted and the area deemed safe, there's not much more the government can do. The, the land in question is a private property. Well, the Minister Vaz is a part of the development process. It is in the final stages of the transition between the current owner to the new developer. But some residents upset, saying the government has not been doing enough. And your role as government is also to protect the rights of the general population. And that is accepted all over the world. If it's going to be changed, then it means that they should be consulted. That's standard. That's orderly and progressive development. I am saying that it, it needs to be revisited. The decision should be revisited. 
So how did people feel about the meeting? I don't really think that our needs have been met, our voice has been really heard. Every time there's a Labour Party government coming, this is what we find. We're finding that a number of communities are having developments approved and sometimes the files disappear. I'm assured this time the files have not disappeared, it's legitimate, but it has happened hurriedly and there has been absolutely no consultation with anybody who lives in the community. The citizens do res reserve, of course, the right to not be pleased with the nature of the development. That's their right. But as to whether or not they can stop it, given that it's private property and they have had their approvals, um, that's something that I don't think is possible. Meanwhile, Dr. Tufton is also recommending that a monument be put up to commemorate the 40,000 lives lost during the cholera epidemic of the 1850s. Shamala Mitchell, TVG News.